Reed Duke is one of the most recognizable faces in the game of Magic the Gathering, someone who's generally just a good person and has done so much for the game through content, gameplay, and just everything that he's put out there. Recently wrote an article on TCG Player, going to be linked down below in the description, called Why You Should Care About Competitive MTG. And there's certain sections of this article that I actually want to go over with you. And I think as an average Magic player, maybe someone who's busy with adult life, can't really go to competitive events and just someone who recognizes and, and aligns myself with that, even as a content creator, I find myself only playing, you know, a couple leagues a week, maybe one day at locals at most and playing other games. It's really hard to convince myself to commit this much time to magic. And so this is what I want to do as an average player, show you why maybe you should or should not care about competitive magic. And I'm going to come to a conclusion at the end, whether I disagree with Reed or not. So I think you might want to stick around for where I end up landing. But let's go over some specific parts of the article. Now, if you want to see more videos like this, obviously leave a comment down below what you want me to talk about next. And obviously, I need you to leave a like on the video. Not a lot of people are leaving likes. I need you to leave a like on the video so it helps out with the algorithm. But let's hop into the first section here. As we scroll down, I'm going to go into this section about the foundations. So competitive and casual magic are not at odds. In fact, they're quite the opposite. He talks about how where, you know, without the long history of competitive magic being there, it wouldn't really provide a long term incentive for the casual magic players. Casual magic probably wouldn't go away if the pro tour ceased to exist. But however, he does believe that it would be cheapened to a lesser extent. And I think what he's trying to say here is that if you get into magic, you want to strive for more, right? It's more than just trying to beat your opponents across the table. And there is going to be a discussion about commander later in this article as well, and kind of splintered throughout. But ultimately, if you're learning through one V one formats, I personally think you should be learning magic through popper. That's, I don't think it should be draft. I don't think it should be standard. It definitely should not be commander. Do not teach players how to play magic through commander. That teaches so many bad habits. Um, but I think, that if you're playing constructed magic, you generally have an inkling to do better. You want to play a deck that generally wins you games, right? Like you, you want to invest in a hobby that you're enjoying. And a lot of people find enjoyment through winning. That's just the truth, the truth of the matter. You wouldn't be doing something if you're losing in it constantly. That's just a fact, right? Even if you're brewing decks yourself, which we're actually going to get into this section about brewing, which is why I want to bring this up with a kind of vein ripper. You want those brews to have the effects that you have, which is kind of a way of winning. So if you wanted to enact a certain game plan, maybe in a commander deck, then you want that effect to go off. And whether or not it wins you the game, maybe you find satisfaction in that combo going off. But that is a form of winning. You have succeeded in your game plan. And that is what you want. You want success. And so that's what com uh, comes with competitive magic if you do well. Now, he talks here about how Team CFP Ultimate Guard showed up with the deck at a recent tournament consider that cons many considered to be a joke vampires and ended up winning the whole thing would vein ripper have 10x in price in a matter of days and competitive play didn't have far-reaching impacts now i don't think making the argument that competitive play is important for the pricing of magic is good so i i this is going to be a big red flag that i post i don't think you want to say i get what you're saying this is just generally as a joke something to put out there it's a fun little tidbit and it's a really cool homage to the fact that as a casual magic player there are still so many unexplored avenues of decks in many constructed formats that you can still there's a small percentage that you can come in with your hot spice with your unfavored deck that while well, other players say is unfavored and come in and win if you have a lot of knowledge a lot of practice and i think that's generally what he's trying to say but this little bit maybe a bit of a red flag but brewing is still important in this next section he talks about honing your craft and really learning more in the game so in this section, he says, if that person loves magic and plays a lot, they can still benefit from picking up some pointers here and there. Learning about the game and improving over time makes things more fun and rewarding. Players of every level enjoy finding a cool play or a complicated board, which is what I was kind of talking about earlier with like a fun interaction that you want to go off with. No one likes missing triggers or failing to capitalize on cards abilities that they had in mind when building their deck. Uh, for example, nobody likes to be mana screwed there. Uh, that's not a competitive virtual casual thing. Everyone just wants to be able to play the game. And so this is talking about how if you do invest in the game in a competitive sense, 
how would you improve your deck? This article spotlight is what's the optimal mana curve and land ram count for Commander by Frank Karsten. And I think stuff like this is actually a good uh, example of competitive magic play. When people care about the game, they get passionate about the game, they want to share their insights through articles like this from Frank Karsten, talking about how you can improve your game and create more, or sorry, create less non games for yourself create more scenarios where you can go off with the combo that you want and i think this is not necessarily like this is a result of competitive magic play this is an output this isn't really a reason to care for it but it's a reason to care for the output itself and and yes this is a big positive for this i think a lot of heuristics that people have in this game would not be here such as bolt the bird or what's a keepable seven and sideboard guides and like all these things that are really important to people i don't think they, they would exist without competitive play and this is a big important piece to this i think especially going back to my point about not learning the game with commander you want to be able to learn interactions in the game in an isolated environment and then extrapolate you don't want to be adding the table politics and the four player turn order and all that nonsense and learn the game that way you will not be able to learn the game as fast as you can but then when you learn in 1v1 scenario maybe with competitive play you then hop into a commander game you're gonna be able to brew and work with a lot more fun interactions or interesting interactions to you to then create some really fun or just crazy wacky board states uh to take advantage of and win that way in your other formats in your casual formats in your commander games whatever it might be so this is a big point for competitive play. The point on fun interactions gets further elaborated in this section with it's fun. And, and I think this is really important too. creating storylines and people to follow and kind of like when you're watching sports games, watching the history of Tiger Woods and LeBron James and how they evolve throughout their career, new budding folks entering the scene and how they compete with these players as well. I think that's important too. listing kind of small, exciting events like a Hall of Famer gets their first pro tour win after 13 years of trying. That's Reed, by the way. Uh, Nathan Stewart achieves the unified title of reigning world champion and reigning pro tour champion. More recently, Seth Manfield earns a fourth premier event win, bringing him into the conversation of one of the greatest of all time. And so these things are really cool to see. And then what about some individual plays? Let's go down here to a more recent one from a recent modern pro tour with Rakto Scam, where in the finals of pro tour Lord of the Rings, Jake Beardsley makes an in unintuitive play by declining to cast Thoughtseize on turn one, which he had, and then plays his Doughty Boy Voidwalker first, then on turn three, cast a discard spell to then steal the opponent's Ulamog Ceaseless I mean, Hunger. Jake and know, so, right? for those of you, before I play the clip, because this, this is re a really cool moment where you doubt the Voidwalker and then you can activate the Doughty Voidwalker. You'll see it on screen right now. And then cast an a card that an opponent put has with like a counter on it that they put in the exile, which Thoughtseize does. It puts it in the graveyard and then you would exile it with the Doughty Voidwalker and cast it. He's so check this clip out. out. Oh, uh, I think Jake's about to find out. I think we might. Oh, see a, I, we think, I think we might see a smile from Jake in just a moment. A fist pump. We got a little bit of. You got it, buddy. That's uh, yeah. That's a that that's a crazy play. So I think exciting moments like this are also really important for pro play as well. I think just as a viewer, as someone who may not be generally like competing in pro play it's really important to have other players interested in it to get really cool moments like this so you as a player can then improve your game or have these really cool interactions or learn about these unintuitive things that you can then apply in your casual environment your commander games in your fnm in your standard whatever it might be in your format that you interact with there are similar things that you can do similar lines of play for example these tron lands are legal and popper maybe there's some type of tron interaction that you learn from this game uh maybe on this clip exactly that you can apply in your popper games thoughtsies legal and pioneer that maybe there's a thoughtsies line that you want to enact in pioneer that is just as unintuitive as the situation where you cast your thoughtsies later instead of on turn one maybe those situations are few and far in between but as a pro player jake beardsy was able to recognize this and capitalize so this is a really cool moment for the pro tour of Magic the Gathering and just the competitive scene in general. Reed ends off the article by saying tournament magic doesn't appeal to everybody and that's totally fine. However, it's a really good game. Uh, it's really good for the game and the community that it exists. Magic the Gathering is immersive and it offers many cool aspects from collecting to lore to art to countless different formats and ways to play. Tuning into competitive history and tournament coverage is just one of the more ways to engage. If you love magic, I think there's a great chance you'll enjoy it. And this is where I want to provide my conclusions. I think 
you know, provide my criticism about this article and ultimately why you should or should not care about competitive magic from my perspective. Now, I think the article in general, I think Reed could have gone a bit more in depth into some of these points, although I will give him points for what he has brought up. There are a lot of valuable things to learn from this article and take away. I think he could have expanded on them a bit more. Article reading obviously just isn't as big right now. We've seen a lot of the big players like TCG and Channel Fireball lose a lot of their writers and shift away from this type of content just as the landscape of things change with the things that have happened over the past couple of years with digital content, TikTok and all this stuff coming into the big scene we see attention spans being shorter and video content just rising in popularity people want to see things they're visual learners now and so i think these clips are great but i think what really is highlighted from this is the stories and the learning and the big moments are really important for competitive magic and that is why i think you should care about competitive play from a viewership perspective if we can provide coverage for all these competitive events just commentate over them great engaging commentary highlight big moments big plays every format legacy popper heck if you want to throw in casual commander games i don't know the youtube scene for commentated highly edited commander gameplay is up there as well and constructed gameplay is getting there at two people want to watch coverage they want to watch paper magic they want to see big plays and they want to see the exciting stuff it's very much like sports coverage out there people want to be involved in these stories they want to care about these people and i think that's what's important competitive magic is not important because you need to compete in it it's important because a lot of players do want to compete in it there are stories to be had there are things to be learned from to improve your game to improve your experience and improve your engagement in the game that we all know and love and that is what i think the ultimate takeaway from this article is i'm definitely coming away from this article really excited about competitive magic i definitely want to watch more coverage but i think that's where this conversation goes to next we need to fund coverage we need to have more coverage and that's why we have very big community members like anorak das that uh you know providing a lot of legacy and eternal play coverage just putting a lot of coverage on his back all this competitive magic speak just doing god's work for the community folks like that really bringing the game up to a whole new level i think we need to be supporting creators like that supporting efforts like this to bring moments like this to the average magic player so that they can improve they can enjoy and they can further engage with this game but let me know what you think about the article down in the comment section down below let me know what you think about some of my thoughts does this make you want to care about competitive magic even more let me know what you think i'd love to hear your thoughts down below and again till next time